Okay. We are back in session. All right. Bill, if you'll call the. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, the third item that we have on public hearing items tonight is item C, RZ 1309-3369, Osborne Road. Okay, on this one, since I represented a property owner on this exact property in the past, I'm going to recuse myself uh, just out of all abundance of caution. So I'll actually leave the room. So don't think I'm running out. I'll be back in when I'll call it uh, back to order. And I'm going to hand over the gavel to Rebecca. So if y'all got out of hand, she'll throw this thing. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to send J Max the timeout. This is a rezoning request uh, on RZ 1309 Churchill Partners LLC and the community development directors here for the presentation. Mayor Pro Tem and Council, as the city attorney indicated, this is case RZ 1309. The applicant is Churchill Partner, Partners LLC. The property is located at 3369 Osborne Road and contains 0.47 of an acre. The current zoning is R100. The requested zoning is R75. The request is to rezone this property to allow for two single-family residential lots. To the north of the property, 3385 Osborne Road, the site is uh, zoned single-family residential R100, and that area is 2.43 dwelling units per acre. Uh, to the east of the property, um, the property is zoned R100, that is 3348 Bretton Court, uh, single-family residential 2.12 units per acre. South, 3376 Osborne Road, the site is zoned R100 and there's a single family home there currently under construction. And west across Osborne Road is Linwood, Linwood Park and single family residential zoned R75. When the staff initially uh, received this application for rezoning, we were concerned that it may be viewed as a spot zoning and then when we drove out to the site, we looked at the built environment and felt that the actual proposal was one that we could support given the character of the area, the location of the property, uh, and the actual proposal at hand. Uh, the land use plan calls for suburban land use, which uh, calls for a maximum of eight per acre, of which this proposal comports with. Uh, we do, however, believe that the current zoning of the property does allow for reasonable economic use. We do not feel that the proposed two single-family homes result in a use that would affect the existing use or usability of adjacent or nearby properties. And we do recognize that the infill residential development which has occurred in the vicinity of the tract, the home under construction to the south, the presence of Linwood Park, and the designation of sub suburban character of the plan give supporting grounds for approval of this zoning proposal. There are no such uh, known historic building sites, districts, or archaeological resources identified or known by the staff to be on or near the property. Um, in regard to excessive use or burden on existing streets, transportation facilities, utilities, or schools, we have not received a response from any DeKalb County office or from the DeKalb County school system. Um, the police department requested the extension of Osborne Road sidewalk, um, excuse me, the Public Works Department requested the extension of the existing Osborne Road sidewalk with a five foot sidewalk to Divine Circle and an adjustment to the existing curb heights along the property frontage. The police department has indicated that the development should have no impact on current police services and will not require additional personnel. We do believe that the requested R75 zoning would not cause excessive or burdensome use of existing streets, transportation facilities, utilities, or schools. Um, we have recommended approval of this request for rezoning, uh, subject to four conditions. The first being the site plan received August 12th, which is actually um, the two lots. Um, also that all homes constructed shall contain a minimum of 4,000 square feet. That the developer install a five foot sidewalk along the total property frontage along Osborne, connecting to the existing sidewalk, existing to, extending to, to Divine Circle, and that the owner developer be required to adjust the existing curb heights along the total property frontage as required by the city's stormwater utility manager. The Planning Commission also recommended approval of this request and uh, recommended a revision to one condition. Um, 
and that was that they felt the condition relative to the 4,000 square feet should be qualified by indicating that it was proposed by the applicant. And the second condition was um, that the applicant install a planted buffer within the required year, rear yard. Um, depending on the nature of what the council chooses to do with this request, we would ask that um, if you do um, include condition number two by the Planning Commission that we get some specificity on what that buffer might need to be and that the applicant would need to know what would be required from them. Uh, the adjoining properties would need to know what would be expected and then the staff would need to know what we need, need to enforce. Um, so we have recommended approval of this request uh, for rezoning to allow for two homes on this property and we stipulate to the staff report. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. I have a question. Could you give some guidance to that issue about uh, the buffer zone you're talking about or the architecture, uh, landscaping features? Well, when this came up in the Planning Commission, they, they did ask about uh, whether whether or not it would be appropriate to include the buffer there. And the response from the staff at that time was that typically you put a buffer there to mitigate an effect or to um, place a condition there that would between uh, different types of uses. Uh, so in that regard, if you do choose to add that condition, I would recommend that you identify uh, that it should either be a single single row of an evergreen screen or either a staggered row of evergreen screen. Um, I believe their um, preference or their goal was to try to create some kind of barrier between the back of this property and the property to the rear. Um, uh, Susan, could you uh, explain uh, the, the questions I've had are concerned the fact that these uh, this lot was apparently platted and at least on the tax map says Brittany. Yes, ma'am. And so the concern I've had is that this is really um, a Brittany lot and it has what what kind of legal rights or legal ramifications does that carry? Because the concern I've heard is that when you start dividing up this one, uh, it, it, it opens up a Pandora's box to the rest of the other R100s, which is not just Brittany, but if, if this map, if we could zoom out, you'd see it was also Hampton Hall and Cambridge Park. Um, I, I've, I've gotten mixed uh, opinions from various lawyers on that. Well, I understand that concern, which was actually the staff's initial concern, and that was looking at whether this was a spot zoning. Um, and, and a spot, spot zoning carries with it other characteristics. It's not just that zoning in the middle of, of something else. Of, of dissimilar, it's, it's not it's not just rezoning it and making it look like a spot on the map. It's also looking at the domino effect and the adverse effect that it can cause on other properties. So, in looking at that piece of property uh, and looking at the built environment, we we didn't see um, how that could create the domino the domino effect, given that. This is oriented towards Linwood Park. It is not within Brittany. If the staff were approached with a request for zoning within Brittany of this nature, we would not support it. Uh, it's not the character of Brittany. Um, uh, as you drive down Osborne Road, you can see a lot of the infill that has occurred there, infill housing uh, traveling towards this subject property. Um, so, so from a staff perspective, I'm telling you that we would not support this type of proposal within the Brittany subdivision. Um, that we feel that this is distinct and apart from that subdivision, this is more oriented towards Linwood Park. I guess I'm just bothered by the fact that where it sits right now on the map, where it's situated, um, if in fact we color coded this, you would have a little spot on the map. Yes, ma'am. Can we hear from the uh, applicant? I'd like to uh, turn these in for the record of support, if I could, additional okay. to what we have. In the go, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm sorry? I know who you are, but introduce uh, okay. yourself. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm Tom Kamenia with Churchill Partners. Mm -hmm. You can pull that mic up here, tall guy. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, thank you for your time in regards to our 3369 Osborne, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, as I said, I'm Nate Tonka Maynard, and I am in charge of sales, marketing, and land acquisitions for Churchill Partners. Uh, we are here tonight to request a rezoning of 3369 Osborne and Linwood Park from R100 lot into two R75 lots. At the September 4th planning board hearing, our proposal passed with a four to one vote. Recommendation for approval. The Community Development Department and Commission had five recommendations that we will meet and exceed. The rezoning of 3369 Osborne is conforming with the land use plan and we are not requesting any variances or exceptions in regards to building on both lots as R75s. Both homes will be constructed at the highest quality. Churchill Partners has met with multiple residents of Linwood Park and adjacent neighbors within the subdivision and next door in Brittany to discuss our plans. The feedback, as you all know from the emails and phone calls, has been overwhelmingly supportive. We have also had several meetings with Alan Powell, who is the head of the rezoning for Linwood Park Association. Mr. Powell and, and others on his committee have given us a Churchill a stamp of approval on what we are proposing this evening. In regards to our product, we intend to build two 4,950 square foot homes with a total of 4,350 heated square footage. Both homes will have different elevations and will consist of four side brick. We will use upgrade wood windows along with wood shutters. Inside will consist of six bedrooms and four full baths. Site built hardwoods will be used on all three levels with exception to the bathrooms. Custom upgrade cabinets will be selected along with granite throughout the home. Both homes will come with a full stainless steel kitchen appliance package and a wine refrigerator for the butler's pantry. In regards to the subject, if I may, may I go to the uh, screen over here? Sure. I know there's concern about, uh, as you kind of look down here, this is Osborne from Windsor Parkway. And from here to up here is full of R75 infill homes. On this little section of Osborne, uh, there are a row of homes that actually start right here, which is an R75 home. It's not R100, this is R75. That address is 3303. Uh, then starts the R100, 3309, 3315, and 3325. All three of these homes are zoned R100, however, they are not conforming. Uh, I think the average square feet of the uh, lot is around 10,600. Uh, the subject property, if subdivided, will be a total of around 10,200, which will be conforming for R75. Uh, I'd like to also notate that this home right here is an R100. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are a total of seven R100s with one R75, and there's also one here that's at the corner that I believe does have an Osborne address as well. I'd like to also indicate that we have support from this neighbor at 3385 on behalf of our proposal and also here at uh, 3335 as well. We also have several other supportive uh, neighbors uh, on these two lots here uh, in regards to our proposal. Show me those last two again. I'm sorry. Show me those last two again. Uh, you can't really see this thing 107. Okay, around the bend there. Uh -huh. Okay. Lastly, I would like to thank you for your time for this proposal. Uh, I hope you consider it for approval. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Um, I do have a question for you while, while you're up here. Yeah. The lot 3332, is that front on Osborne or on Brenton Court? 3332, the long lot. Uh, yes, that's on uh, Brenton. That, that front's Brenton. Yes. Um, do we hear from supporters first? If I might, do you just desire to re uh, reserve the rest of your time, sir? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Any supporters? Uh, we'd like to hear from uh, supporters of this uh, project. Alan Powell. Oh, I guess we'll call you out. short people. Uh, Mrs. Mayor Pro Tem and uh, members of the City Council, uh, my name is Alan Powell. Good evening. The good news is this is the last one, so you're almost there. Um, 
want to introduce myself. Uh, I'm the uh, head of the zoning committee for the Linwood Park Association. Uh, as an association, we have a little over 200 homes in Linwood Park, and uh, there are about 88 members that make up the associations. We actually have a decent ratio of members um, to the association. Um, there are a few things I wanted to reiterate tonight, uh, in addition to what I sent to you earlier, but, uh, and, and some of this has been reiterated by the uh, members uh, this evening. The comprehensive land use plan is sort of our baseline. Um, as a organization, what we try to do is help mediate, mitigate building that goes on in Linwood Park. And as you know, uh, it's been a wild, wild west. Uh, so we're really excited about uh, having our new city and uh, trying to work um, with, uh, with the builders as well as the city council and, and staff to get the right products built uh, there. But the, the foundation of that is the comprehensive land use plan. That's, that's what we have, and if we want to change that, that's okay, but that's what we have today, and that's what we have to use to provide insight to the builders as well as people that live there. Another important fact is it's conforming. Um, something else that doesn't happen in Linwood. We have a lot of, of non-conforming properties, and so for us, it's, I think it's almost as important uh, for the zoning to be adequate and meet uh, the characteristics of the neighborhood as well as the conformity of the zoning. Uh, that's uh, incredibly impo uh, important for us. Uh, a third component, and almost as equally important, is the fact that there aren't any variances. Uh, we don't want people being able to reach out from one window to touch the other side. And the fact that, again, it's conforming and that there aren't any variances is vitally important for what happens in that area going forward. Uh, we are not aware of any of the members of the Limited Park Association that are, that are against this. Um, again, as an association, we try to do our best to, to educate everybody and get their feedback in the process. Uh, and in fact, uh, Mr. Maynard, the applicant, pointed out uh, we have residents that are directly adjacent to the property and certainly um, to the left that has a R100 lot that is in support of this. Uh, you may ask why, and, and he, I think, along with the members of the Limited Park Association, all agree we're excited about having the building. It's a great product that's going in. The builder is already built in the neighborhood, uh, and we're really excited to have future residents in the neighborhood. Uh, we feel that it is, this is a Linwood Park zoning issue. It fronts Linwood, doesn't have any access to Brittany. Uh, as a zoning committee, our goal is to make, um, make sure that the zonings are within the comprehensive land use plan. They're conforming, as I mentioned and that they support what our members are interested in doing and having built in the neighborhood. In this case, we have an existing builder who has been very engaging and transparent. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen all the time, so we're eager to have that uh, discussion with the builder. Um, he's interested in building a great product, as I mentioned earlier, and it's certainly in line and characteristic with the other homes that are in the neighborhood. So in closing, we certainly support the applicant for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Uh, again, we think that this is a, a request for a zoning in Linwood Park um, we don't think that uh, this is about drawing boundaries between the neighborhoods and certainly we've got people and friends and, and we all coexist in the same area. We want to have a good product that supports the community as a, as a whole and that's what we think this does. It's simply a request to rezone two properties in a conforming manner. Most of the properties in Linwood um, are R75 predominantly. I don't know what the exact number is, but it's over 80%. Um, it's probably even greater than that um, are that designation. Of course, some conforming, uh, many that aren't. So thank you for your consideration, and we hope that you will vote in support of the applicant. Thank, thank you. you. Michelle Russell. Hi. Michelle Russell, 3138 Frontenac Court. I am a Brittany resident and homeowner for the past nine years, and I am in support of rezoning this property from R100 to R75. Uh, in fact, my property uh, backs up to Linwood Park and I do not view my rear property as Brittany. Uh, to me, the defining characteristic is the access. So I know we're all familiar with the area. You go into Brittany through Woodrow Way, you access Linwood Park through, in this case, Osborne. So to, to me and to many uh, of the residents of Brittany, this is in fact not a Brittany uh, lot. So I am in support and uh, thank you for your time. Questions? Does your lot back up to Silver Lake? It does. We don't, we can't see my lot on this, uh, this map it, here, it is uh, but it's Frontenac. So when you okay. enter in Brittany, it backs up to Silver Lake Drive. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Brendan Parnell.
Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and Council, uh, Brendan Parnell, 3154 Frontenac Court. I echo uh, the sentiments that Mrs. Russell just uh, just discussed. I also live on Frontenac, and my property backs up to Linwood Park and Silver Lake. And so I sit on my deck every day, and I look out on Linwood Park. You know, and I see a neighborhood that we know it lacks it lacks cohesion in the size of the lots as well as the products that are that are on those lots and the applicant in this case is proposing um, to put into place a product that will help Linwood Park and help the community as well as the city of Brookhaven and it's not inconsistent with the current characteristic of Linwood Park it fits right in with the characteristic of Linwood Park uh, and so uh, I believe that it will bring a positive economic development to the community and to the city uh, and in general will elevate Linwood Park as well as the surrounding area and for those reasons I, I support the project. Thank you. I have no more comment cards in support of this item, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Can we hear from opponents please? Mm -hmm. Come on up and you can fill out Come on down. <laughs> um, my name is Ian Mackey. I live at 1170 Shamboard Way in the Brittany neighborhood. Um, I've lived there since 2005. I've been pretty active in the community. Um, the eight, eight years I've lived there, I've served three years on the Brittany Club Board of Directors, one year as president. Um, so I, I care a lot about the neighborhood. So I don't take these decisions lightly and I try to get all the facts before I actually make up my mind on something. Um, and I've talked to a, a lot of neighbors over the last few months about this issue. And I've concluded that it's, um, you know, the, the subject property that we're talking about at 3369, um, it's acceptable to change from R100 to two R75 lots. Um, I've studied the zoning map and the zoning map is a, you know, a pretty, pretty uh, close up. But if you look at, you know, as, as stated before, I'll just reiterate that um, the majority of the lots in Linwood Park are zoned R75. And I think I counted um, today at work when I went to the Brookhaven website and I found this little neat little interactive map. If you count the number of R75 zoned lots just from Windsor Parkway on Osborne all the way back, it's three times the amount that are zoned R75 versus R100. Um, so the idea of spot zoning, I just, I, I just, you know, don't agree with. Furthermore, you know, I really think um, I agree with a, a former comment that I, you know, it's not a Brittany lot. It's clear that if I was trying to buy a home and I went down to Osborne Road, I would consider myself a Linwood Park resident, not a Brittany resident. There's absolutely no access to the Brittany neighborhood. Um, you know, having the understanding that the builder is planning to put up close to 5,000 square foot houses is going to be good for the surrounding neighborhood. That's always a concern when somebody tries to build a house that's too small for the neighborhood and might impact values um, around them, and I don't think that's the case here. Um, I've also heard there's been a lot of emails and phone calls floating around the Brittany neighborhood and the Cambridge Park neighborhood and the Hampton Hall neighborhood. Um, and you know, claiming that they represent the neighborhood and that it's just going to create this crazy precedent that people are going to be able to come in and rezone these R100 lots in Brittany, Cambridge Park, and Hampton Hall to R75. And I just don't, I don't think that's the case. Because if you look at right now what I consider the Brittany neighborhood, Cambridge Park neighborhood, and Hampton Hall neighborhood from a street access perspective, 100% of those lots are R100. Um, so I'm in support of, uh, of the proposal, and I'll answer any questions if you have them. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll hear from uh, opponents. Daniel? One moment, ma'am. Jack Lesher? Yes, sir. Robert Bush.
Uh, I'm Robert Bush. Pull that down a little bit. Yeah. Right. I am uh, currently building the house south of this property, uh, which is the one uh, 3376. Okay. Uh, all the lots along there, I'll give you the sizes of the lots. Uh, let's see, can you see which ones they are? Uh, uh, 33, 25 is 18,787 square feet. The next one up is 17,000. 17, oh, hold on a second, let me catch up with Ruth. What was the first one? 18,787. I know, but what was, oh, uh, 3325? That was uh, 3325. Okay, 18,000? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The next one is 17,513. Is that going north? It is going north. Uh, the next one has not been subdivided. If it is subdivided, it will be roughly 17,500 square feet. The one we're building is 17,623 square feet. The next one is the property that's in for rezoning is 20,000 square feet. Uh, the next one is 17,934 square feet. And then outside of the point, which is 33, 3385, that's 26,419 square feet. This road through here, this cluster of homes, the lots are wide, they're not terribly deep, but all the homes are substantial and they all fit. That's a good look. Dividing this is going to reduce the, the overall feel of the property. Uh, the home we're building, if you consider the basement as the applicants consider, we'd have close to 8,000 square feet. So it's half the size of what he's proposing. So I, I just want to go on record as opposing those. What's, a, what's the length of your frontage and, and your house? I think we're at 103, but the house is uh, uh, back at the building line. We're roughly close to 100 feet wide. Uh, it's 113 feet, 100, 100 feet wide. Thank you. Patricia Mabley. Hi, Patricia Mabley, 3254 Breton Circle. 32. Um, 3254 Breton Circle. And I, in fact, am part of the precedent setting crowd, that this would set a bad precedent. And, um, I have, you know, no problem with the Linwood Park people wanting to fill in that awful lot all, by all means. It seems like it would be easily solved and everybody would be made happy. If the, Come on, speaking into the microphone. If the builder put one lot, one house there, I don't think anybody's going to object to that. It's just like, it seems like the only one who benefits from subdividing this lot is the builder. And um, the people in Brittany have some concerns, at least. And I'm, I'm supporting the people who will be directly impacted by that. And so, don't want it to set a precedent. Thank you. Thank you. Ken Benson. Hey, I, I live at a 3302 Witcher Way, which is in um, Brittany. Um, I have no dog in this fight. I have an R100 lot. <clears throat> I don't, unfortunately for me, I don't have the, one of the big, beautiful houses in our neighborhood that's being built now which I'd say the average are about 80 to 85 um, feet wide with obviously the R100 lots. So a um, great neighborhood, bought there for a reason. A um, couple things, the Cab County voted no in 2004 and 2010. Uh, both the staff and their um, zoning group said no way. This is gonna be a spot approval, we deny that. Um, spot approval obviously does benefit just one person, the developer. Uh, the approval will set the precedent as mentioned earlier and obviously this is Brittany, this is not Linwood Park. You can clearly see by the map. Um, and obviously, you know, I work unfortunately with a lot of builders and developers who I've talked to for the last month. Once again, I'm not um, an elected official. I'm just trying to care about my neighborhood and make sure we keep the integrity. And all of them said the same thing. Um, and I actually got a text from someone who said, Wendy Butler agrees. And I think she was someone I recommended, I was needed to talk to because she does um, development for, um, she's an attorney working with developers. And she said, bad precedent. Um, will be a spot approval. My developer said, we live for these days. When you approve something like this, we then take it and run. And once again, the people that are um, in favor that live in Brittany, if you told them 
this now is going to impact your neighborhood. Now everything is R75. They most likely would have a different vote. So, um, uh, and I do think that we could say, well, next time it happens, we'll vote that down, Mr. Benson, and we'll obviously protect your neighborhood. Well, then they're going to take us to court, and the city now is going to have to defend um, your original um, spot approval, possibly, in court, and most likely we're not going to win as a city. So, um, now if you want more density and we need more tax revenue, then obviously let us know that and be transparent, and if that's why we're looking at this. Um, otherwise, once again, this is Brittany. Um, we don't have a big turnout, but most of the turnout is by, we did some flyers, did some emails, and I walked through the neighborhood personally, trying to get some people to be interested in it. Um, a lot of people have you know, told me you know, they're against it, if, once again, they understand that it's gonna impact R75. And in the last zoning, and your staff could um, confirm this, the, um, our Churchill property said that they closed in this property and purchased it in August. As of five o'clock today, the Cap County records, which are current as up till Thursday the 19th, have no ownership of Churchill, Churchill properties. Same original owner. So I don't know why the developer told us on September 3rd we purchased it last month. And then I just ask you, um, as our new city council, doing a great job with everything else, you know, keep the city as is. The Cab County understood this piece of the zoning, and obviously they um, opposed it twice. And uh, we just hope that um, you will continue to keep our neighborhood the way it is with the R100. So please oppose. Thanks. Thank you. Render Davis. Mayor Portan and members of the council, appreciate your time. I'm Ren Davis and I live at 3317 Breton Circle. I've lived in the neighborhood for 25 years. My wife and I moved there in 1989 for the proximity to Silver Lake, for the landscape and for the tree cover. And uh, as has been said before, if this were Linwood Park, I'd be fully in favor of it to let them continue to improve Linwood Park. But as you can see, it's within the borders of Brittany. It's, it's a terrible precedent for potential ambitious development, uh, assemblages that could happen as you create that hole in the dike into the Brittany subdivision that I think would be a very terrible thing to do um, under these circumstances. So I strongly oppose this uh, because of the, the risk of what it might mean for our neighborhood in the long term. Um, and I just stand on that point. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Tapper. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and members of the City Council. My name is Steve Tapper. I live in that uh, long, unsubdivided tract, 3332. We've lived there since 2000, and we strongly oppose this. Uh, we are a couple doors down from the, the proposed sub subdivision. We don't want to be looking at houses of the nature that are, have sprouted up on Windsor Parkway that are three and four stories tall and narrow. Uh, we were drawn to Brittany uh, due to the big lots and the character of the, of the houses and the, um, we just, we think in addition to the precedent, which others have covered and I'm sure I'm going to save some time for Mr. Rosen who lives next door, um, but you know, we, we do not want um, Brittany to be, um, to have a precedent setting decision possibly. Um, that would adversely imp impact the neighborhood. So for those reasons, we do um, oppose this uh, application. Thank you. Do you. Can I ask you real quick, do you plan to subdivide your lot? We're not sure, we're looking into it, but um, if we do subdivide the lots, you know, we would, we would build one house, or we, if we kept the lot, I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do with it at this point. We haven't taken any steps to subdivide it, but we certainly would not uh, sell, subdivide the back part and then try and further chop that up and build two small houses there. Um, that's just not what we would do. Um, I th we have a house kitty corner the other way. Uh, that was one of the defeated um, measures um, on, uh, I, don't, I can't see what um, number it is, but going uh, towards uh, Windsor Parkway, that was the 04 um, denial where they tried to combine the, the two lots on the other side of us. And there's a big house, kitty corner to us, that's great. You know, we, we did not want two or three houses jammed together going up to the sky. We have a big house, a nice big yard, that's great. People can do what they want with the property within the constraints of the R100, but we moved to an R100 
subdivision and we want it to stay that way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Rosen. My name is Steve Rosen. I live at 3340 Breton Court, and I'm building a house at 3376 Osborne Road. Members of the council, Mayor Pro Tem, thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, I got three points to make, and I'll be brief. Uh, the first one is to the spot zoning issue. Spot zoning is a provision which benefits a single parcel of land by creating a zone for use just for that parcel and different from the surrounding properties in the area. I looked online, I found that out. I learned about spot zoning. Folks, this is spot zoning. The, well, the staff has explained that across the street is R75, that's a misnomer. It's a park, it's a playground. And, and it's not ever going to be R75. It's going to be a park. It's going to be a playground. When I spoke to some of these folks earlier tonight, and I trust you've gone back there and looked, it, he described it as the Habersham of Linwood Park. And I'm like, yeah, I like that. Folks, we are building a 103-foot wide house there. The applicants proposed to put two 30-foot wide houses. The house on the other side, I don't know, it's maybe roughly 80 feet. Everything is wide except for these. I'll concede that further along there's some thinner houses, if you will, but in this area is nice, and this is all about the rising tide, if you will. The second thing, a point I want to make is, since we're building this house next door, we submitted plans. We put together a budget. We came together as a family and said, this is what we're going to do, and this is how much we can spend to do this. And part of that is, what was going to happen next door? Well, next door was R100. 100 the other way. So now, after I've spent, you don't want to know how much money I spent on concrete, okay? And for surveyors and builders, I got a lot of money in this. And now I'm hearing that, well, you know, your price point may not be there because there's going to be a couple of 30 foot houses. Folks, it's not right. It's not consistent with what's there. It's not what's consistent with what should be there. Finally, I fully agree with the idea that this is part of Brittany, as platted as Brittany. And I'll tell you, I'm a lawyer. These are the things we live for. When you make these kind of precedents, you put yourself in court, and the Pink Pony and, and Brittany are just going to be on your plate forever. Thank you. Please, no. Thank you. Mayor Pro Temp, we've reached our time limit, but I have one more comment card. I think. Here, one more. Yes, one more. Chester W. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Chester Voina. I live at 3288 Brenton Turkle in Brittany. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things I do want to mention. Um, I bought my house in 1996, about 17 years ago. But I've been looking at Brittany since 1992. I've cherished this neighborhood for about 20 years or more because of its character. So one thing I would like not to lose is the character of Brittany. Um, everything we said about Lingwood Park, that this is good for it, it will um, augment the value of the homes and the character of Lingwood Park, it all stands true. But R100 will stand true plus more. So there's no reason why it couldn't be R100 and also meet the goals that they have for Lingwood Park. The last thing I do want to mention is that um, it is Brittany, it's a Brittany plot, legally it is Brittany, and it will establish a precedence. And years to come, people come, people go, people change roads, and years down the line, the people that are here today will probably not be here. Nobody's going to remember what we talked here today, and there will be somebody putting an R-75 in Brittany. So I strongly oppose it. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, I have no more comment cards. Okay. Um, uh, Tonka, would you like to have some rebuttal time? I was like Smith for the record as far as uh, ownership goes. We did close in, uh, in July, and I do have paperwork that I have submitted to the uh, city. 
Um, this tax records have not been updated. So I just want to make sure that's clear for the record. Okay. Uh, Tonka, let me ask you a question. Uh, several people have, have said you're building uh, a 30 foot wide house. Is that correct? 30 to 35, it'd be 50 to 50, uh, 55 deep, total of around 49, uh, 50 square footage. And what do you think is the price point? Uh, we're going to be looking at anywhere between 8 to 825. Well, what were those dimensions again? Uh, 30 to 35 wide and 55 deep. Three car garage. Now, let me ask you, if, if the lot is not, uh, if we don't subdivide it, can you build uh, a good product on that house? Well, you could, but it would be a negative impact for the company. Um, but you did buy the house, you did buy the lot knowing... Yeah, we do own the lot. But you bought the lot knowing that you would need to subdivide it and it had already been mm -hmm. turned down twice. When we bought the lot with hopes of being able to do that, yes. Okay. But do you disagree that it does have an economic use the way it is today on, on it the It has subdivided? an economic use, but also be a negative impact for our company. What, what do you mean by that? Uh, well, obviously, if we can't get two lots, it would be a negative impact from a financial standpoint. Yeah, I'm, I'm questions for staff. Um, thanks for, for those. Um, I'm not, it's, it's to the legal precedent question, so I don't know if Susan or Bill, whichever of y'all want to chime in. Uh, what merit is there on this uh, setting of precedence and being able to be, for future developments, to be entitled to R75 zoning in Brittany? Um, I, I think that I previously kind of made some comments about that. I would tell yeah. you that each case is based on its own merit. I would tell you that with a precedent, there has to be an area upon which that is to occur. And from a staff perspective, we do not see in this area where that could potentially be a negative impact and we do not see it happening in Brittany and we would not support it in Brittany. The character of the built environment in this area in Linwood Park is separate and distinct and apart from Brittany and in that regard we would not support something in Brittany of, of this nature so in that regard we do not see it to be a precedent. Billy, you want to jump? I, I think you're, I think the word that you use, hang on Susan, when you choose the word entitlement, uh, I don't think that it, it creates an entitlement. Is there an opportunity to argue that? Certainly there's an opportunity for that argument to be made. But I, I think you have, you know, your, your professional staff, it is, it is a stretch to, to, when you subdivide those properties and you gave them no access to that subdivision, to, to say that they are appended to that subdivision. I mean, I can show you places that are called Windward in North Fulton County that are not part of, uh, that are owned by, were owned by the development company, but really would not ever be considered part of a character area because they, they really join some major arteries that really don't even touch anymore. But, so, there's always the possibility. There's always the argument. Um, I, I think it's. I think that the handicapping that you're hearing from the folks uh, that it, it, it's going to somehow going to uh, subdivide all of that up is is. I think they're overstating the, po the possibilities of it. But there's always that possibility. Yeah. Um, the reason I wanted to keep you up on Susan, you might know, you may or may not know the, the answer to this, but in the Cap County's review of this parcel, if it went up for rezoning or subdivision twice before, do you, are you familiar with why they recommended uh, um, denial? And, I really didn't dig into all of that. I know there's history there, but I like to look at things on their own merit. Yeah. Um, and so I did not dig into the 
um, details of that in that this was a case before the city of Brookhaven. Right. Uh, and when you look at this neighborhood, I mean, uh, the plot, the, the, uh, the plat says that it's Brittany lot. Uh, how did, how did those things become determined? Is that simply a legacy from most of these lots or most likely that they were all long lots and have been divided? I would Is venture to say they're probably part of the original Brittany plat. Yeah. Um, and then through the course of time, then these divisions have been made. But in, in no case in this area have any of those divisions resulted in an R-75 on the back side, of, on the Linwood side. Uh, it does not appear based on what I'm looking at. I don't have any more questions. Okay. All right. Do I uh, hear a motion? Mayor Pro Tem, you need to close the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, everybody has spoken who wants to speak. With that, we will close the public hearing. Uh, do I hear a motion? I can't make a motion. I move for denied zoning RZ 13-09 Churchill Partners LLC rezoning request for R100-R75 property located at 3369 Osborne Road for two single family residential lots. Do I hear a second? I second that. All right. Um, we're open for discussion. Do you want to say anything or discuss it anymore? Well, I, I do. I do want, you know, I feel strongly that this this lot is, uh, should be characterized with the Linwood Park. Um, the issue, which I think is an abundance of R75, and I think that this lot as subdivided would conform to that, but the issue is the effective property owners for me and that you've got such a difference in width of house in these lots that the subdivision creates uh, sort of a non-conformity to, to the adjacent lots. So I, I would, I, while I do not believe it, it should be classified as Brittany, I think it would be wrong to subdivide it. Um, I think what's unique in my mind about this lot is that it probably has one of the largest frontages. So I can understand the, uh, uh, the interest in subdividing it. Um, on the other hand, you know, our comp plan, while it does characterize this as potentially suburban, which would allow a higher development, it also says that we really need to protect our existing neighborhoods. And I know that when we were forming the city, many of us said one of the reasons we need to have our local zoning is to really protect our neighborhoods. I personally think Brittany is one of our finest neighborhoods. When I drive people through Linwood, I say this is the most interesting neighborhood. It's got such a, a great history. And, uh, but I've often admired these houses right there that face the park, and I've been thrilled that they really are among the, the most beautiful and gracious of the homes in Linwood. Um, and I love that because they're facing the rec center, which has not always been a great place, but I think people understand or have the vision that it's gonna be like their own little you know, uh, community club there, and it's gonna be really wonderful. I, I've heard from just about everybody on that street, and while there are a few supporters of this subdivision, I'm quite sympathetic to the people who have invested and bought an R100 house with the expectation that the houses next to them would also remain R100. Um, I think we have to protect that right. I, I, I fully understand the debate as to whether it's this Linwood or Brittany. Um, yes, it faces Linwood Park, but I think I think what's what's persuasive to me is these other existing homeowners in the R100 have invested and bought in good faith that those houses will, on that street, on that section right there, will remain R100. So I'm inclined to protect that. I, I tend to agree. I mean, several points. One, one was made uh, 
about the park across the street. There are no small lots across the street from this. There's, there's a park, I think, at some point, uh, uh, not I think, but I know at some point that's going to be uh, developed and, and become a, um, uh, quite a, uh, uh, a fixture in the community. And I think preserving and protecting what's across the street. But more importantly, um, at, had asked a question earlier in, in the uh, work session if this lot had not been subdivided front to back, in other words, created two lots with, uh, but still had the frontage on Brighton Court, would it be sub would it be rezoned? And had a, heard a resounding no. So with that in mind, uh, I just I can't support the rezoning of a back piece that was carved off uh, at some later some previous date by a, uh, a homeowner or, or a, a builder, whichever the case may be. But finally, most importantly to me is, is we have, throughout the community, throughout Brookhaven, throughout my district, Asher Park, uh, Drew Valley, we've had a number of situations where we have uh, nothing more than a street dividing uh, zoning districts. And in some cases, we've had nothing more than the rear property line of, of a line of houses, line of properties dividing zoning districts. And we have tried very hard to maintain those district boundaries to, to also maintain the fabric of the community. And I think this example is one that hit home, hits home for me in just trying to preserve a much larger uh, picture and a much larger uh, image of the community that extends, uh, as um, Rebecca said, it extends well up into Brittany and, and beyond into the Hampton Hall and Cambridge. So I think it's important that we uh, respect these lines. These lines were, were drawn for a reason and, and these communities were established based on those lines, so I think it's time that we, uh, that we respect those zoning lines going forward. I do want to say that I, I have had a chance to see um, uh, the Churchill uh, Builder properties, and they are beautiful, and I, and I welcome that kind of building in Brookhaven, and I would, I, would, I would really hope and encourage Churchill to build the most beautiful house in all of uh, Linwood Park on that property. He's got a, you know, a spectacular lot. I think it would uh, support it. I, I hope you can make the economics work. I, I believe it's economically viable. If I didn't, I'm, I wouldn't approve this. But he also bought the lot knowing, um, knowing the conditions there. I, I also want to say that, you know, while I've been flooded with emails and calls, um, I really appreciate the engagement all of you have had in the community and the work you do on an ongoing basis. I know Alan Powell's working like crazy over in Linwood Park and does great stuff. And uh, those of you who have gone up and down your street and engaged your neighborhoods, uh, thank you. Thank you. That's just a, it's a, it's a great thing to see. Um, you can see these zoning decisions are not easy. Uh, and we're a young council, we're a young city, we're a young planning department, and we're going to make mistakes. We, we may not always get it right. But you can see that we, uh, we're, we're trying to take a lot of time and care and struggle with it and, and hopefully ask the right questions so um call for a vote we're trying we to do the right thing so let's we vote. still have voted okay all in favor of uh the motion to deny aye aye uh the zoning is denied okay we can bring j max in